Okay, viewers, thank you for viewing another video. I pray um, that you were blessed in the last video. This video is a continuation of the previous one. And we will continue in a general overview of the prophecies of Daniel um, 2, 7, 8, 9. So without further ado, let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your love towards us. We ask for your Holy Spirit to please teach us now and give us understanding that we might understand these things. Please give me clarity of speech. Please open the minds of those who have viewed the video and help them to understand. In Jesus' name, Amen. So we stop at the stone kingdom which smite the image on its feet and bring an end to this image. And we know the stone kingdom represents the second coming of Jesus Christ. For in Daniel 11, 12, 2, 4 to 4, it says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. So the stone is a kingdom that the God of heaven shall set up. So let us continue. So the second coming of Christ. All these prophecies is showing the history of the kingdoms of the world and this great controversy between God's church here on earth and the kingdoms of the world under the rule of Satan. So, Daniel 8. Development of the little horn of the, of the goat. Daniel 8. Now, in Daniel vision, we had two rams. Two. In Daniel 7, we had uh, four unclean short-lived beasts of prey. In Daniel chapter 8, we have clean beasts. A ram and a, and a he goat. The kingdoms of the world in Daniel 2 was represented as metal, gold, silver, brass, iron, iron mixed with clay. The kingdoms of the world was represented in Daniel 7 as short-lived unclean beasts of prey. Now the kingdoms of the world, the the, the third and the, the the second, third and fourth kingdom of the world are now represented as clean beasts of prey. Now, in Daniel chapter eight, we have a ram which had two horns, and the one of the horn came up. The higher one came up last. This this ram represent the kingdom of um, the empire of the means and the Persian of Daniel uh, 8 verse 20 the angels tells us that it represent uh, the means and the Persian the he goat of Daniel 8 5 to 8 the angel tells us that this represent the Greek empire in verse 21 see we have there and the the notable horn came up from this he goat because this he goat after he rushed on the ram furiously he destroyed this ram so the greek empire destroyed the middle persian empire and the angel told us that this forest horn in the eyes of this he goat is the forest king and history tells us that this was alexander the great we will look at the interpretation in a while then after that it says the little horn of the goat the king of fierce consonant came up but well, we will look at all of that step by step so let us go we'll use james white life incident page 4748 he interprets this vision it says on the symbols of this chapter 8 the ram the he goat and horn which wax exceedingly great the prophet receives the following instruction the ram which thou sawest have two horns are the kings of the Medes and the Persian. Verse 20. The Persian division of the empire was the highest and came up last. The ram, the ram with the two horns was the well-known emblem of the Medes and the Persian. It says it was usual for the Persian kings to wear a diadem made like a ram's head of gold, Scots. And the rough goat is the king of Grisha, and the great horn that is between his eyes is a forest king. Verse 21. This was Alexander, who was born BC 356, decided the fate of Persia at the Battle of Arbella, BC 331. 
and died eight years thereafter in a drunken fit at the age of 33 BC 323. And whereas the great horn being broken, four came up in its stead. Four kingdoms, said the angel, shall stand out of the nation. Verse 22. These were Macedonia, Thrace, Syria, and Egypt, into which the empire was divided shortly after Alexander's death, governed respectively by Cassander, Lysimachus, Seleucus, and Ptolemy. So, we here we have the explanation of the ram and the he goat. So the ram represent the kingdom of Medes and Persia. The he goat represent the Greek Empire, and the forest horn in the he goat's head represent Alexander the Great. After he died, the Bible says that four horns came up, which was represented by the leopard-like beast of Daniel seven that had four head and four wings. The wings represent the swiftness with which Alexander conquered the whole world. Historian tells us he conquered the whole world within three and a half years. And on his deathbed, when he died, it was reported that his general asked him, one of his general asked him, who shall take control of the empire? And Alexander's reply was, the strongest. So right there and then, even in death, Alexander had declared war in his own empire. So those four generals, the strongest general, know that the only one who is going to rule the empire will be, will have to fight in order to do it. So the, the empire was divided into four, the Greek empire was divided into four empires. And it, these names are Macedonia, Thrace, Syria, Egypt, which was governed by Cassandra, Lychimachus, uh, Seleucus, and Ptolemy. Okay, let's continue. Now, this is from another Daniel and Revelation. The Bible says where there is one and two witnesses, let every word be established. So that was from James White. This, was a, this is a um, recent Daniel and Revelation printed by Harvest Time. It says, and I recommend you read this book too. It says, here four general, his four generals, Alexander meaning, divided the empire between them as he uh, had no adult son to rule after him. Actually, his descendants were later m murdered so, so that they could not claim the throne. The so four horns, like the four heads of the leopard, represented the four generals of Alexander the Great, which took over the, it took over the kingdom following Alexander's death, just after he had conquered the entire world. These were Cassandra, who had Greece and its areas, Lysimachus, Lys 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 who had Asia Minor, Ptolemy, who had Egypt, and Seleucus, who had Syria and Babylon. Daniel Revelation, they printed by Harvest Time, page 94. So here is a map. Now history tells us that, history tells us that these two generals were destroyed. So only two empires left. The Seleucus Empire, which was known as the Seleucus, uh, Seleucus dynasty, which is also known as the King of the North. And then we had Ptolemy, the Ptolemy dynasty, which is which is also known as King of the South. He had control of Egypt. So basically, we had Seleucus Empire, King of the North, which was Syria and Babylon, which is very important. And then we had um, Ptolemy, which was Egypt. Okay, let us continue. And we had Jerusalem in the middle here so we had king of the north Seleucus, king of the south and jerusalem in the middle so let's continue here i want to show you syria king of the north king of the south egypt and then we have jerusalem right in the middle now this is eyewitness of history it tells us that babylon was in the king of the north very important and this is from Daniel Revelation page 102 this is from the harvest time Daniel Revelation this is the ring of the um, the signet ring of Alexander the Great now the little horn of Daniel 8 the little horn of Daniel 8 so 
it says this is the rise of the little horn the pagan then the papal rome so we had alexander kingdom divided into four uh, macedonia thrace syria egypt we know these two were overrun thrace and macedonia and they only had syria and egypt and then the bible says another horn came up daniel chapter 8 daniel chapter 8 verse 9 it says and out of one of them meaning the four horns it says and out of one of them came forth a little horn which walks exceedingly great towards the south towards the east and towards a pleasant land verse 10 says and it walks great even to the hosts of heaven and it casts down some of the hosts and the stars to the ground and stamp upon them so who was this little horn power now is the rise of this little horn who is this little horn power well let's jim white jim white let's listen to james white he will tell us it says and out of one of them came forth a little horn verses 9 23 to 40 interpretation rome was not connected with the people of god and hence rome was not connected with the people of god and hence it's not introduced in the prophecy till after the conquest of Macedonia. One of the horns of the goat, one of the horns of the goat, hence it is represented as coming forth from one of those horns. This, that this little horn was, which wax exceedingly great was Rome, the following consideration proof. So the following consideration Proof. Let us see who was this little horn power. One, it says it it was the rise in the latter part of their kingdom. That is of the four of the four kingdoms. So did Rome. So as far as its place in the prophecy is concerned, its connection with the Jews commenced BC one six one. And he he is quoting from Josephus, a Jew, from his book. Uh, Antiquities of the Jews, page 166, volume, um, volume 2. It says, 2. It was little at first, so was Rome. It walks exceedingly great towards the east and towards the south, so did Rome. It conquered Macedonia, BC 168, Syria, etc., to the river of Tigris, BC 65, Egypt, BC 30. From this horns, increasing towards the south and east particularly sir isaac newton infers that it arose in the northwest corner of the goat's dominion example in italy which points directly to the romans fourth consideration it cast down some of the hosts and of the stars to the ground so did rome persecuting the disciples and ministers of jesus as no other power ever did Life Incidents, page 48, 49. Let's continue. It magnified himself even to the prince of the host, thus did Rome, when both Herod and Pontius Pilate conspired against Jesus. 6. He shall destroy wonderfully the mighty and the holy people. Let from 50 to 100 million of mar millions of martyrs make good discharge against persecuting Rome. See Religious Encyclopedia. 7. It was, a, it was the only power that succeeded the four kingdoms which wax exceedingly great. 8. In this vision, Grisha succeeded me the Persia just as it had been since seen twice before. And it is observed to suppose that the power which follows them in this vision is a different power from the one which twice before had been seen succeeding them in chapters 2 and 7 and that power was Rome so the ninth consideration it says he shall be broken without hands how clear a reference does the stone cut out without hands which smites the image upon his feet chapter 2 34 James White pages um, life incidents pages 48 and 49 so we see that the little horn that came up after the four horns came up of Daniel 8 is the power of Rome. So, 
in Daniel chapter 8 continuing we come to a very important verse remember it's just a general overview not a verse by verse study it says Daniel 8 14 says and he said unto me unto 2,300 days then shall his sanctuary be cleansed so the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary and here we have a prophecy of the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary in which we will not deal with at this moment we will continue and we until we come to the spirit of prophecy to help interpret these things for us so the 22nd of october 84 where jesus entered into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary for the work of the investigative judgment so when did the investigative judgment began 1844 the, the 2300 days began from 457 BC when the decree was made to rebuild Jerusalem according to Ezra uh, 7 and um, it was the uh, from 457 up to the anointing of Jesus Christ 27 AD was to be six to nine weeks or 483 years from that time Christ was anointed and he went about preaching for three and a half years until his death upon the cross crucifixion the next three and a half years Christ was um, his disciple preached the gospel which culminated with the stoning of Stephen in 34 AD so 2300 days began 457 BC the decree to rebuild Jerusalem Ezra 7 up to the anointed of Jesus 27 AD his death on the cross started 1 AD Jesus was crucified until the stoning of Stephen the close of probation for the Jews started 4 AD then um, from 34 AD this ends the 490 years prophecy of Daniel 9 so 490 years subtracted from the 2300 years will leave us with 1810 years and that 1810 years began from 34 AD which ended in the year 1844 which marks the beginning of the cleansing of the sanctuary and the judgment our message of Revelation 46 to 7 so let us continue 22nd of October Jesus entered into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary for the work of investigative judgment so the great disappointment explained we know the advent history 22nd of october was a great disappointment for the people of god but the next day the 23rd of october um hiram edson and his associate um cruiser they went out into the cornfield in as a, an in an attempt to unite the brethren and they had a vision and they saw Christ move from the holy place to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary, which led them to study in the book of Hebrews of the ancient Hebrew sanctuary, and they found out of the heavenly sanctuary and the work there. So Jesus entered into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary for the work of investigation of our characters. So Daniel 9. So here we will stop and we will continue in another uh, presentation for the interest of time remember it's just a general overview which we'll try to identify who is the king of the north of daniel 11 40 to 45 so let us pray father in heaven thank you so much for coming across coming so far in another mind, milestone in the studies of these prophecies a general overview oh god i ask of you that you help us understand these things and if the people need to pause the video to look at these quotes to see that i'm not making these things up i pray that you may impress the hearts to do so thank you for hearing our prayers in the name of jesus christ amen